In this video, we're going to be working with a series of 16 images with an exposure time of one minute, covering a field of view of almost two degrees that includes several asteroids. Finding those asteroids is no mean feat because they are weak and there are a lot of stars. We're going to pre-process the images with WBPP to generate a master image that will contain the asteroid trails. To do this, we need the pixel values of the master to be the maximum values, not the means. As those maximum values correspond to the positions of the asteroids in each image, the result will be a master where we can see the trails the asteroids have left behind. Then, we'll use Annotate Image to label the asteroids and find the trails. First, we open WBPP and we add the directory containing the lights and the calibration images. In this set, we have 16 lights that we're going to calibrate with darks and bias frames to subtract the thermal signal. In order for this to work, we need to configure a few things. First, as the master integration is the maximum of each pixel set, we need to make sure that cosmetic correction is enabled. This means that if the dark frame subtraction doesn't remove all the hot pixels, the cosmetic correction will remove all traces of them from the master light. Then, in the integration parameters in the lights tab, we need to select maximum in the combination options. We don't want the trails to be rejected as outliers, so we need to select percentile clipping as the rejection algorithm and set the percentile high to 1. By doing this, there won't be any high rejection and we can be sure that none of the asteroid pixels will be rejected. Finally, we can disable the functions we don't need like subframe weighting, local normalization, and autocrop. We simply want to calibrate the images, align them, calculate the astrometric solution, and integrate them. In the Post Calibration tab, we want to enable Drizzle Configuration. Finally, we add the Output Directory, which will be WBPP. Now, we create a process icon with all these settings and click on the Diagnostics button. The only warning we get is that percentile clipping should only be used for small image sets. But this is a special case. We want to use this rejection algorithm specifically because we don't want any high rejection. Now, we click on Run. Now that WBPP has finished, here we have the master. As we enabled the astrometric solution option in WBPP, the master already has the equatorial coordinates for every pixel in the image. All of the aligned subframes also have their own astrometric solutions. We're going to annotate these two images. So, we go to the Render section and open Annotate Image to annotate the asteroids. However, we're not going to annotate the main asteroids. The ones we're interested in are the ones in the databases that we've downloaded from the PixInsight server. We can add these databases by adding a layer of XF files. We can select up to three files. There are 13 XF files available, containing more than 600,000 asteroids. We can add all of them by adding multiple layers of XF files. 
But in this case, we're just going to add the first XF file, which contains the first 50,000 asteroids. We're doing it this way because the exposure time of our images is just one minute, and the very weak asteroids aren't visible. If we annotate this image, in theory, all of these asteroids should be visible. However, many of them aren't because they have a magnitude of 19 or 20. But we can see the brightest ones. In this image, we can see asteroids with magnitudes of up to about 18. We're going to tell Annotate Image to only show the asteroids in this database up to a magnitude of 18. Remember, for the annotation to work, we need to make sure that the date and geographic coordinate metadata are correct. When we filter by magnitude, we find four asteroids in the image. This one here, and these three. Thanks to the astrometric solution with distortion correction, the asteroids are in exactly the right pixels and positions. If we go to the master light with the asteroid trails, WBPP automatically sets the observation date to the average date of the subframes that make up the master light. This means that, when we annotate these asteroids, Annotate Image marks their positions on the midpoint of the asteroid trail. Here we have 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is barely visible. Finally, we add the aligned images to Blink to locate these asteroids. Here, we've zoomed in on the trails in the master light. If we duplicate the zoom and pan and copy it over to the Blink window and click on the Play button, we can see the movement of the asteroids. Here's one. Here's the second one. and the third, which is the brightest one.